Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Another great addition to dynamic array functions is the XLOOKUP function. And this is the perfect function for anybody who has ever struggled using index and match to perform lookups. The index and match formula in itself is a reasonably complicated formula and it can be quite difficult to remember, particularly if you don't use it all that often. With the introduction of XLOOKUP, not only is it more powerful and more flexible, the notation is a lot easier. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of how we can use XLOOKUP. Now in this table on the left hand side, I have some apps listed out. I have the category that the app belongs to, the app name, the type of app it is, the revenue and the profit. And effectively, what I want to be able to do is select an app from the data validation drop down list and have it return the category, the type, the profit and the revenue. Now, normally you would look at using VLOOKUP or something like index and match for this. And in fact, in order to return the first result of the category, you would have to use index and match. Because remember, one of the big limitations of VLOOKUP is that you can't use a lookup value that's to the right of what you're trying to return. So in this case, Google Docs is to the right of the category. So this would need to be an index and match. Now, just so you get a good comparison as to how simple XLOOKUP is, let's do an index match first of all. So we're going to type in equals index. And the first thing we need to select here is the array. Now the array is what you want to return. So in this case, we want to return the category. So we need to select the category column, control shift down arrow to select that comma. We now need to provide the row number. And remember, we can use the match function to help us automate the finding of that row number. Our lookup value is whatever we have in cell H3, and our lookup array is wherever we're going to find that lookup value. So that lookup value exists in the apps list. Control Shift down arrow. The final argument that we have here is the match type. And for this, we want to do an exact match of the app name in the apps list. So we want a zero argument on the end. We're going to close off match, close off index and hit enter. And that's going to give us our result. So let's just double check this. We need to find Google Docs. Here it is in row nine and the category is productivity. So that's all working. And if you can remember this formula, that's fine. You can still carry on using index and match. But now let's take a look at how we can do the same thing, but this time using XLOOKUP, because I think you're going to find this a lot easier. So we're going to type in equals XLOOKUP and press the tab key. Now the XLOOKUP function has six arguments. And you'll notice that the last three are optional arguments because they're in square brackets. So you don't necessarily have to use all of these arguments. The first argument that we need to provide is the lookup value. So that's fairly straightforward. We're looking up whatever we have in cell H3. We then need to provide the lookup array. So where are we going to find that app? Well, we're going to find it in the apps list. Control shift down arrow to select that column. The only other thing we need to provide is the return array. So what do we want to return? We want to return the category. So we need to select the category column. Control shift down arrow. Now, if I wanted to, I could just stop right there. I don't have to go ahead with the final three arguments. So if I close my bracket and hit enter, it's going to give me the correct result. So now let's do the same thing, but for the type, we're going to use some of the other arguments. So let's type in equals XLOOKUP. Our lookup value again is whatever we have in cell H3, and we're looking it up in the apps list. We then specify the return array. So this time we want to return the type. So we need to select the type column, comma. Now let's take a look at the first optional argument, if not found. 
So this is where you can specify what you want it to say if it can't match the app in the table. Now, if it can't find it, I just want it to say not found. And we need to put this in quote marks. The next optional argument is match mode. So this is the type of match you want to do. So much like the match function, we can choose to do an exact match, but we also have some other options here. We can do an exact match or next smaller item. We can do an exact match or next larger item, or we can do a wildcard character match. So the wildcard character match, that would be relevant if I had, for example, maybe Google asterisk as my lookup value. So we can do wildcard character matches. And these other two where we're looking for an exact match or next smaller or larger item, I'm going to show an example of that in a moment. It's very similar to when you do a VLOOKUP approximate match. Now I want to do an exact match. I want to match the words Google Docs exactly in the table. So the next argument is a zero, comma. Now I can choose how I want to search through this list. So this is something else that you can't really do when you're performing a lookup with index and match. I can choose to search first to last or last to first. And I can even do a binary search. So if I have my items sorted in ascending or descending order, I can specify that here too. Now, if you don't provide any argument just here, the default is searching first to last. So it's going to start at the top of the table and search through the entries top to bottom. So let's do first to last, close the bracket, hit enter, and now I get the type. Let's double check to make sure that that is correct. I can see, yes, the type here for Google Docs is free ads. Let's just finish these off. Let's do the profit. So we're going to do X lookup again. The lookup value is Google Docs, comma, the lookup array is where we're going to find that. That's in the apps list. The return array this time is the profit column. And I'm not going to use those optional arguments. Let's just close this off and hit enter and we get our result. Let's just do the final one because practice does indeed make perfect. Lookup value is H3. We're looking it up in the apps list and we want to return the revenue this time. So we want to select the revenue column. Close the bracket, hit enter, and we get our result. Let's just make sure that we are still all correct. And I can see that yes, everything seems to be working. So now if I change the app that we're looking up in the drop down, everything should update nicely. So XLOOKUP is not only a lot easier in its notation, it's a lot easier to understand and remember. It also allows you to specify a few different pieces of criteria. Let's take a look at another example of XLOOKUP. Because remember, XLOOKUP is part of the dynamic array set of functions, which means that it can spill and return multiple results. So let's take a look at a quick example of that. I have a small employee table just here. We have some employee IDs, some employee names and their department. And what I want to be able to do is type in the employee ID and have it return the employee name and the department. So we're effectively returning two pieces of information from this table. So we're going to type in equals XLOOKUP. Our lookup value is going to be the employee ID. We're looking it up in the employee ID range, and we want to return the employee name and the department. So when it comes to the return array, we simply just need to select everything that we want to return. I'm going to add a piece of text if it's not found. So we're going to say just not found in here. I want to do an exact match and I want to search first to last close the bracket, hit enter, and take a look at that. If I now change this employee ID to 1005, you can see that everything updates. It looks like Terry's in the same department. Let's choose something else, 1008. There we go. Now, if I was to enter in an employee ID that doesn't exist, so let's say 2000, I'm just going to get that if not found text in the cell. So you can use XLOOKUP to return multiple results because it is a dynamic array formula.
Let's take a look at our last example. And this is where we're going to focus on that match mode argument. And this is very similar to how VLOOKUP works when you're doing an approximate match as opposed to an exact match. So what we have over here are some tax rates and some salaries. And what I want to be able to do is type in a salary and get it to return the tax rate. Now, what if the salary that we have in cell D6 doesn't exactly match a salary that we have in the table? So maybe I have in here 30,000. Now, I want to apply some formatting to that. So let's just apply some accounting format and take those decimal places down. And I want it to return the tax rate. Now, because we don't have 30,000 listed exactly in this column, I effectively need to do an approximate match. So I want it to return the tax rate that it's nearest to. So I can choose if I want to return the next highest or the next smallest. So let's type in equals X lookup. Our lookup value is the salary. We're looking it up in the salary column. We want to return the tax rate. I'm going to skip over the if not found option because we want to go straight to match mode. So this is where I can choose if I want to do an exact match or I match it to the next smallest item or the next largest item. Now I can't do an exact match here because 30,000 doesn't exist in the table. So do I effectively want to round it down to the one below or round it up? So I'm going to say I want to do an exact match or next larger item. So that's going to be a one argument. Let's close the bracket, hit enter, and it's going to give me a tax rate of 25%. So if we look at the table just here, it's picked this one out because 30,000, if we were to round it up, the next tax rate would be 25%. If I was to change this to, let's go for 14,000, it's giving me a result of 12% because again, it's rounding it up to 15,000 effectively. So that match mode is very similar to VLOOKUP approximate match. This video is part of our complete set of courses for Excel 2021 and Excel 365. To take a look at our courses, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see more Excel videos, click over there.